Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Just sitting outside, having a little coffee, and uh, I was thinking about stuff today. I was thinking about the work that I'm doing on my OCD. Some days are better than others. Today is a good day. Um, there are a couple videos I wanted to make over here. I still need to do a PO unboxing. <clears throat> All the stuff sitting in the kitchen. I've been threatening to make that video for about two weeks. Um, and then I wanted to do a video about budgeting because uh, I mentioned something about budgeting on a video that I did over here not too long ago. And a lot of people asked me to uh, make a whole dedicated video over here talking about how I got out of debt and budgeting and things like that. So I think I'll make that video over here as well. Is this my husband coming up? But... I think, you know, since I, this is my husband, I can hear him. Nope, it's not my husband, it's my neighbor, hey! Um, you know, I'm in like really deep therapy for working on my OCD and I've talked a lot about it over, is this my husband? No, that's not my husband. I keep on thinking I'm hearing my husband come home, right? Um, I made a decision a couple months ago like, on a scale of 1 to 10, if you had asked me at that time how bad my OCD was, I would have said, like, compared to my past, I mean, I've had it my whole life, right? Like, ever since I was a little kid, I can remember lining my um, stuffed animals up on the floor or lining them up in my bed and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I think that that was my, my way of, you know, living with a parent that was in active addiction, living with chaos in my family, with divorce. and th I was like, I know it sounds crazy today, but, like, you know, in 1977, 1978, when my parents got separated when I was like five or six, we were literally one of the first families in Indiana that I knew that was getting separated or divorced. Like, period. End of story. And so, like, I can just remember people looking at me differently. If it wasn't for being effeminate, it was for that. Um, I always felt like other families were kind of talking about us. I will say this, that... The neighborhood that I lived in was very, very protective of me as a kid. They loved my mother. They loved my dad. And so the parents were very protective. Uh, I think they, there were probably conversations that occurred behind the scenes of, you know, don't talk about Peter, don't make fun of Peter. You know, he's, Peter's going through a hard time. I just, I look back on it. It was like school was so horrific for me. And I was so bullied so harshly. I mean, people would say things to me like, you don't have a dad when my parents were separated and divorced. People would be like, well, your dad didn't want you anymore. That's why I left. I mean, people said that to me. Like when I was, I mean, I talk about the bullying with being gay, but it was so much more than that. I mean, people would say the cruel things to me about anything, right? And, um, you know, even though I, I, I share this because I see so many friends of mine today that are going through divorces or they're divorced and they talk such horrible stuff about their partner. And, you know, they don't really, like, one partner or the other won't step up to the plate. And until I was, like, late middle school, high school, like, I never really even knew. Like, I knew that my parents fell out of love and they got divorced, but I didn't even really know that my parents didn't really like each other. Like, they co-parented so well together. You know, like, if I was got some punishment, my dad would come over. I can remember that happening, you know, way back in the day when all the neighborhood, had, neighborhood kids got caught for smoking and drinking. And um, it was my mom's beer and cigarettes that I stole, so of course I was blamed for everything. And I can remember my dad came over and my parents sat down. I was sitting on the stairs, and, you know, uh, in our entryway going upstairs and I was crying and my dad was like, you know, we, you have to be responsible for this, you know, we're gonna have to punish you for this and things like that. And, you know, my parents were just, they co-parented so fantastically and I've shared this story before, but like, I think because of how I see divorced families work today, like it means so much to me. Um, my dad, from the time that he left to the time I graduated from high school, if I wasn't with him, staying with him, he called me every morning to make sure that I was up for school and to wish me a good day. And he called me every night at bedtime to tell me that he hoped that I slept well and, and to say good night. Every, I mean, my dad could be camping in the Canadian Rockies or on a boat in Honduras because he did medical missionary work in Honduras. He could be anywhere in the world and my dad would pick up the phone and call me. My dad canceled major medical meetings. You know, he sat on a lot of boards when I was growing up as a plastic surgeon. He sat on he sat on the state medical board. He would cancel meetings to show up to like my school choir concerts and things like that. My dad was so involved. My mom was so involved and I'm so grateful for that, you know. But I think that because I grew up in this active addiction and I grew up in this chaos, right, that I didn't know how to make sense of that, like my room, which I never even really loved hanging out in my room, but I can remember like when stuff would go on or my mom would be like, my mom, 
my mom would get like, and she wasn't like drunk every day, but like when she would, she would get very sad and she would start crying about my dad and the divorce and stuff. And I didn't really know how to handle it. And I was an only child. So I would go in my room and I would just kind of like turn on my record player and, you know, I would play little records and like those records where you turn the pages to them. And I would line up my stuffed animals and they would be my friends. And I named them my stuffed animals very normal names. Like li literally like Steve and Tom and Charlie and things like they were all like named very normal names. Like they were my siblings. And I look back on that and I think that I was like trying to kind of have some kind of family that I was developing in my mind that was imaginary even though I knew it wasn't real. And that's really kind of where the OCD started for me and I've kind of tracked it back there. But if you had asked me before I, like I, I mentioned it a couple times to my therapist but like I never said like I want to work on this. Like the day that I was going to talk to him about it, if you had asked me on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being like off the charts, 1 being not bad at all, like how bad my OCD was, I probably would have said a 5 or a 6. When I started talking to him about it, I mean, he was like just, um, he could not believe it. He was like, you literally are living in rituals all day long. And I go, oh yeah, like it's constant, right? He said, Peter, your OCD is one of the worst cases I've ever seen. He goes, it doesn't get into like the bizarre and the weird because most of my rituals are pretty normal. Like a lot of them wouldn't make sense to you. Like, there's a crack in the driveway. That's been, like, a really easy one for me to get rid of. I can see it right here. But, like, it's, like, a crack that's, it kind of goes, like, like this off to the side. And so I always have to step two feet in it when I, but that one's been, like, a really easy. That's kind of, like, as weird as it gets for me. The other stuff is, like, tapping, counting. I'm, like, really big into the counting, right? So, um, but about two weeks ago, I found myself, like, either crying out of sadness, like, something would just... I would remind me, I just would be thinking about my mom or something and I just would like start like bawling uncontrollably. I was so sad. Or I, something would make me really happy, right? And I would start crying out of joy. Because I don't believe that we have to show emotion or cry over just sadness. Like I think happiness can do that to us too, right? And it does that to me. But I was like really, really up and down between happiness and sadness. Like it was like constant. I was like so... I felt so emotionally vulnerable. Like I literally felt like he could just poke me and I'd go, ah! like I was like literally crying all the time, right? So we went in for our couples counseling session and I said, okay, I don't want to like <clears throat> spotlight this whole session with just talking about my OCD, which we have talked about in there to make Alex aware of it. And like he's been very, you know, helpful as far as like, what can I do to help? What do you need from me? And things like that. And so we've talked about that, but those sessions are for he and I not just to talk about that, right? But I asked our therapist and I said, you know, I've been really, really emotional lately. Like, I feel very emotionally vulnerable. And I said, do you think, and he's like this. And I go, you think that this could be for me working on the OCD? And he said, absolutely, 100%. He said, whenever we push through something that we're working on, especially like OCD, when you have these defenses, right, that you have used all of your life to take away the fear of things happening or trying to control outcomes in your life, even though they may be irrational to you or to other people, he said, all of a sudden, those defenses are gone and you feel just stripped raw and vulnerable and man that was how I felt I'm starting to feel better but there are even still moments throughout the day where I feel I mean I think a lot of like during that period of my time on like my drama channel I was like really ate up and I don't take it back I don't at all I'm not gonna apologize for it because I felt like it was right to stand up for myself and I still do but I was very like emotional and kind of ate up with comments and stuff and I think it would have probably just been best for me to just kind of stay out of the comments at that time. I was like, I, I mean, I mean, I could read a comment and somebody would say, like, Peter, you have the be most beautiful blue eyes in the entire world. I'd be like, oh my God, nobody says anything nice to me. You know, or I could read a comment and somebody would say something to me like, Peter, you're the biggest liar in the entire world. I'd be like, oh my God, everybody hates me. I mean, it was like so extreme, you know? And um, it was, I'm just gonna say this because I got the comment, okay? I'm not like, this is not me shitting on anybody, but I would get comments and people would be like, Peter, I seriously think you're going through menopause like me. <laughs> but I mean, I was like all over the place, right? With my emotions. And so when I said that to him, he was like, yeah, 100%. Like, you know, when you take all your defenses away, Okay, your emotional defenses that you've had for years and years. I mean, some of these rituals that I've had, I've literally had for years upon years upon years, okay? And now I don't have them anymore. Um, and so I'm like referring to my notes because there was like two points that I wanted to make in this video. So hold on a second. But now that I don't have them anymore, I'm like, like, I just feel like emotionally, I feel just raw. You know what I'm saying? Um, hold on a second. 
Well, that doesn't explain it because I said what I learned about my OCD. You know, I think like that's a big part of what I've learned about my OCD. I think the other thing that I've learned is, well, this is a big part of it that we've been discussing lately. You would think that when chaos is happening in my life, if that's where it originated, that when chaos is going on, that that would be the moment that the OCD comes out. But my therapist is having me kind of track my rituals and tracking when they're coming out. And what I have found is that late at night when I'm not on my phone and I'm just sitting here drinking a Diet Coke, here I got a Diet Coke too because I open it, but I'm just sitting here watching Real Housewives of Miami or something, and I'm so relaxed, I'm literally like this, watching the show, right? That's when the OCD comes out. And we're not necessarily sure yet why that is, but it's when my head starts spinning. When I'm active all day long, I'm doing this and I'm doing that, like I don't really feel that like my head is spinning that much. It's when I'm calm, and I would just love to know if anybody else with OCD relates to this. It's when I'm calm and I'm relaxed, which I've worked so hard in my life to have peace and serenity. Like, I can't live without it. But now what I'm finding is, and I, and I don't feel like this was the way it was before. I feel like before it was when, like, crazy stuff was happening that all of it was coming out. But now I feel like it's shifted. The further I work through stuff, it almost kind of like to me, it's, it's crazy to sound, sound this way, but it's almost like the OCD is like this worm in my body that has like supernatural powers and it's kind of like weaving in and out of different times and different areas of my body. I don't know why. It's like, it's like this entity of its own, right? And I feel like it's shifted because it, what it was doing before isn't working anymore because I'm working through these rituals. Like I walk right through the, the driveway. I walk right up the stairs. I'm like getting rid of these rituals one by one. The ones that I'm not being able to get rid of, like I'm writing down and we're gonna work on those individually and we're working through the fear associated with that as well. Like dealing with those fears. But it's like it shifted and now it's like, it's taking over my peaceful, calm, serene moments and my head is just spinning. So I'm sitting here and I'm watching like Below Deck Mediterranean and my head is just spinning with fear. And then I found myself tapping and doing this and moving the, the coffee cup like four way four, you know it's like all of it's coming out then which is when i'm the most relaxed right so it's crazy how this shifts in my head but the more educated i become about it the harder that i work on it the more honest i am with my therapist i think the more honest i am with you guys about it and talking about it the better i feel i'm working really really hard of it on it i'm very proud of myself if I can do it, you can do it. So many of you have shared your stories and they've been so helpful to me. So I just want to say thank you so much for that. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, mental health issues I have learned are very, very similar. There's so many things about this that are so similar to me getting sober, you know, 28 and a half years ago, that one of the things I realized about mental health is it's like, it's not something that just like goes away, you know, overnight. Um, it's one day at a time. At least working on OCD is one day at a time. I can't speak to other um, mental health issues. But working on OCD is one day at a time. And um, and some days I have good days and some days are not that great. Some days I really, really struggle, you know? Some days it's like I know that I need to be working on it and I just can't stop the rituals, which are days that I call my sponsor or I reach out to my therapist and I'm like, okay, like... Or I like write down notes about what's going on because those are days that I'm really, really struggling. But most days these days, since I've been very conscious of it, are good. I have to say, one thing that is positive that starting is, I'm not, I'm, I'm conscious of it every day. But some things, like walking to the end of the driveway or, you know, getting the mail or taking Boo out or something like that, like the, the, the part in the driveway, unless I like walk through that part of the driveway, if I walk through the grass, I don't even notice that it's over there. Like, so I'm starting to not notice these things as much. Back in the day, that was not true. I mean, when I was starting to work on this, I noticed everything, you know? I knew how many stairs there were. Well, I don't know how many stairs there are, but I knew how, what foot to start on to end on and things like that, right? It doesn't feel like that anymore. It's starting to feel more natural, you know? And he said that with consistent work on this, that in two to three months, things should be much better. And oh God, they already feel so much better. And I just wanna share this with you for anybody out there that's struggling with anything, you know? Just day by day, we have to do the work and get better. We have to, you know? 
I'm so grateful that I started working on it because I'm starting to feel freedom and release from all of this. And your support has meant the world to me and I love it and I really appreciate it. Well, I love you and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.